Okay. I'll start with the letter that you sent uh, back on June 9th, 2020. Um, so when you see this letter here and then you know about the circumstances that we're dealing with right now, um, how frustrating is this for you that this didn't happen? Well, I'm frustrated and angry. There was an unnecessary loss of life because these people allowed this guy to get out of prison way earlier than he should have ever been. A judge fairly determined his sentence and CDCR unilaterally changed that. That's not justice, that's not process. And I think that they're violating the, the Constitution. The Constitution under Prop 57 allows victims and the public to give input when they change sentencing policies. And they have not allowed for any public input, which is why I, along with several other elected DAs, filed the lawsuit against CDCR to stop them from releasing people until the court rules about whether the public's entitled to give their say. So they directly went went against what Prop 57, how Prop 57 is written. Can you get into that a little bit more? So Prop 57 gave CDCR authority, and I don't think the voters really understood that. But CD, Prop 57 gave voters the authority. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> Prop 57 gave CDCR the authority to modify credits to some degree. What they chose to do on not on second strikers like. Gonzalo Echeverria was they're trying to give them 66% credits on their sentence, which is more, it's double what they would have otherwise gotten. In order to change those policies, the Constitution and Proposition 57 says the public has a right to give you their thoughts. Victims have a right to weigh in on that. But CDCR has chosen not to allow for public comment and it's just gone ahead and done it. They skipped that process that's that's written into there and just said, you know what, we're gonna go ahead and, and release him early and, and a lot early too. I think the sentence was eight years. It was, it was eight years and four months. Right. And eight months after he was sentenced, yeah. we get this letter saying, hey, he's being considered for early parole. And then we know now he was in fact given early parole. Right. And had he have, have served this, we might not even be standing here today talking about this and two, young people, young innocent people, for all we know, might still be alive right now. Absolutely, he would still be in custody. Yeah. yeah. What, what, what's your message, just kind of candidly, the best as you can to the parole board about moving forward if we do get another case such as this, and this does happen again? Well, I think they need to listen to the public. I think the public has a right to say, hey, we don't want that, and they need to listen, but they're not given the opportunity to, to use their voice at all because they're being shut out by CDCR. Why do you think CCR, C, uh, uh, the parole board's doing this? Why, what, what benefit is it for them? Are they being uh, guided some, by someone else? Yeah. Well, I, I, I definitely think um, our policies are driven by our state's leader. And, um, you know, there, there hasn't been any attempt to um, shy away from the fact that their intent is to r reduce our prison population and this is one way to do it. Is there any concern that this guy now, this Gonzalo guy, could happen all over again? He could get sentenced, he could go to prison, and he could be out again in maybe two years this time. Not if I have my way. Um, he's facing very serious charges and potentially special circumstances, which if we decide to file circumstance, special circumstances, it would be a life without possibility of parole. Just finally, uh, lastly, what's your message to the family um, uh, of the two young victims? Oh, my heart is broken for these families. That Losing a child is just one of the worst things anyone can go through. And it is the worst part of our job as DAs is to have to meet with those families at this time in their life. Thank you. You can stop it.